Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition with Apostle Victor James. I'm standing on behalf of him today, and I'm Pastor Victor James. Again, good morning, and I hope that every one of you have had a good night rest. Amen. So, uh, quickly, let's get into uh, quickly, let's get into this. Um, in First John one, says John says that our, our our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son. You know, emphasis on with the Son because there's no way that you can have a relationship or fellowship with the Father except you come to the Son. Remember that Jesus is the express image of, of the Father. Amen. And in John 4, Jesus himself says that <clears throat> God is spirit and to worship him, it seeks for those to worship him in spirit and in truth. So the Father is a spirit and is looking for those who worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Also in Philippians 3.3, 3, Paul says that we are the circumcision that worship God in spirit and put no confidence in the flesh. So, Jesus said that the Father is spirit and he seeks for those who worship him in spirit and in truth. And Paul said that we are the circumcision that worship God in the spirit and we put no confidence in the flesh. So, which means that um, we are the Father's desire for, um, for, uh, Father's desire for spirit worshippers. So the Father being a spirit has long been desiring for spirit worshippers and now because of Jesus coming, um, death, um, burial and resurrection, he now has the fulfillment of that desire. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Okay, so quickly before we get into this, I want to uh, um, talk about two things, two announcements. If you haven't gotten this book by AVJ, his new bestseller, How Jesus Did It, Please, at the end of this um, sermon, you will see the number on the screen so you can get in touch and ask for your own copy. Amen? Amen. And secondly, here on YouTube, Apostle Victor James. I will, I will say that again. Apostle Victor James. Once you type it in the search um, um, button, the search space on YouTube, Apostle Victor James, you will see his um, AVJ's page come up. Please press the subscription button so that if you are not chance to watch the live broadcast, whenever it's on it's going to be uploaded on youtube so wh wh whenever you press whenever it um, it's uploaded you will get a notification but that's if you press the subscription button so that's very very important amen okay so getting into today's topic of discussion we're going to be talking today about spiritual science Yes, spiritual science, science on waters, you know. Um, I wrote here, I said, <coughs> I said, looking for spiritual science are ways the devil and his demons access people. Or we can say distract people, you know. Um, get their attention from what they should be really keeping their attention and their focus on, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. And in the last words, he says, Let's start with Mark 13, verse 21. We're going to be reading Mark 13, 21 to 23. So let's have Mark 13, 21, yeah, 21 to 23. <coughs> Mark 13, 21, okay. And then, okay, this is Jesus talking now. And then if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there, believe him not, 22. For false Christ and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even, even the elect. Okay, so, for false Christ and false prophets shall rise and sh shall show signs and wonders. So, one of the signs of um, false prophets, false apostles, you know, False, false people that do not bring the gospel of Jesus Christ, that do not come revealing the gospel of Jesus Christ to you, exposing you to the gospel of Jesus Christ. One of the major signs that the Lord himself talked about is their love, their pursuit, their, um, their running after, performing signs and wonders. You know? And when you tell such men that... We are called to the fellowship of the Son, and which is revealing and teaching men about the truth. 
teaching men about the, the man Christ Jesus, helping them to be um, renewed in their minds. They will argue. They will even almost want to fight you. They will say that no, the gospel, the gospel of God must be accompanied with signs and wonders. Quite all right, yes. But in the church established, what the Lord requires is for men to grow, grow in his knowledge. He said, unto the Lord is the gathering of his people. So our gathering is to come to know about the Lord and to know him in abundance. Amen. Okay, verse 23. So after Jesus said, he said, but take ye heed. Behold, I have foretold you. So Jesus is even telling us to take ye heed. Be careful. Be careful of this. Be careful of these traps. Be careful of um, always seeking the signs and wonders. Because eventually, the devil has a way of using it or taking advantage of that to take you away from what you should be after, what your focus should be after as a born-again Christian, as, as pe people or persons that are not part of God's family, which is going after knowing Jesus Christ. Amen? Okay, so let's go to Luke 17, verse 20. Luke 17, verse 20. The Pharisees are the way of functioning. And unfortunately, even in, in our days and times, there's still an evidence of um, the Pharisees' behavior, even in our days, uh, days uh, day and time. Okay, and when it was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, so the Pharisees came demanding and asking him, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. So that means the Pharisees are always seeking, or are those that are always wanting to observe, to see things, to see um, uh, a, a mountain move, to see um, um, acts, straight, straight acts, straight wonders, you know. But instead of coming to know who God is, remember Jesus said, no, First John says of the Lord, he said that the Lord came to give understanding. So this man, they didn't have understanding of who God really is, of who God really was. So Jesus came to give them that understanding that in this new life that is coming, we're not only going to be functioning in, your, in, in the pattern of your own ways, which is to observe. You're always looking out for things, looking out for things in the sky, looking out for things um, among people. You always want to see signs. Remember when he was on the cross, they told him, he said, if that be the son of God, perform the signs of wonder and come, come down. But at that point, that wasn't God's plan. Why should God perform a sign of wonder that is not even in, in, in his plan? Amen? He will not perform a sign of wonder of coming down from the cross to show that he is God. But that wasn't God's plan. So, the Pharisees, this is how they, they, they acted. They are most me, men and women apostles, preachers, teachers who are still operating as the Pharisees instead of coming to know the, the truth himself. Jesus said I am, uh, I am the way and the truth. So instead of coming to know the truth himself, they will still want to observe to validate the truth. But the validation of the truth is by faith now. Validation of the truth is by faith now. Amen? Okay, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. I'm just, I, I don't want to waste any time or take too long, amen? All right. For the Jews require, for the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. So like the Pharisees, the Jews are always after signs, Amen. And, and the, the Greeks, unbelievers, they seek after um, wisdom. They always want to know things um, based off, off from facts, like science, you know, and so. Okay, next verse. Verse 23. But we, but we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews, a stumbling block, and unto the Greek, foolishness. So, why the Jews seek signs? Paul says uh, that the sign that is enough for you as a born-again Christian, whether you're a Jew 
or a Greek, uh, or, or, or a Greek that's a Gentile. The sign that should, uh, it should be satisfied with, the sign that will develop you, the sign that will help renew your thinking, your mindset, and help you grow in the things of God as it concerns the New Testament, amen, is to be exposed to Jesus Christ. So hence, so hence, it says, we preach Christ. We preach Christ. We don't necessarily do the signs and wonders. We preach Christ. And this preaching of Christ is what will develop you, build you up. Build your faith up. And remember, the scripture says that repentance is towards God, but faith towards Jesus Christ. Repentance is to God and faith towards Jesus Christ. So we preach Christ, helping to build up your faith in him. Helping that relationship to, to keep going. Helping the fellowship to keep to keep going. Remember first Timothy one nine. You are called, you are called, don't worry, you are called to the fellowship of the Son. Amen. You are called to the fellowship of the Son. Very, very important. Once you know this, once you know this, everything else is settled. Most people don't know that they are not called to fellowship of the Son. And that's who we've been called to. Amen. Amen. So I wrote here, he said, those who make seeking of signs and miracles or prophecies, their goal, are those whose hearts are yet to surre- be surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, come on to me. All you are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You see? So in explaining that in lay terms, so just for everybody to understand, you know, without using the unnecessary big grammars, all he's saying indirectly is, I am the end of all search. I am the point of the last bus stop for your rest. Before me, you could have been trying everything, and you could have been doing any, and everything. And it, all those things you have been trying and been doing, as you went along, will carry you only so far. But when you come to me, I promise you that you will have that rest. You will, ha- you will come to that, that bus stop where you, you, will, you will have um, um, uh, an eternal bliss. Amen? So those who make seeking, seeking signs and miracles or prophecies, their goal, their goal are those whose hearts are yet to be surrendered to the, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Their hearts are yet to find Jesus. So it's possible to be born again, but after, after being born again, your heart's going after something else. And in this case, men's heart, after being born again, I started going after signs and wonders. Amen? That's why he says, this is acceptable by the Father, that you be, um, uh, that you be saved. And after you are saved, you come to the knowledge of the truth. But the issue now is, or the problem now is, man, so many are, are being saved. But the devil is now, uh, you know, taking advantage of certain men's ignorance, or certain men's um, lust, or certain, certain men's greed, or whatever it is, to, from the point of being saved, and then takes them into a corner. Most are not going after that, wanting to know the, the Lord Jesus Christ, wanting to come to the truth. They start seeking for signs. They start seeking for wonders. They start seeking for all s- sorts of things. They're not knowing that all those things that they are seeking for, or the sense of validation that they are, they are going after, going to Christ Jesus, a straightforward plan, a straightforward um, result. Though it might tarry, but you should surely come. That's who Jesus is. That's what Jesus is all about. But he wants you to come of your own will. Come to know him. Come to the knowledge of the truth. And eventually everything that you are seeking for will come. Isn't that what the scripture says? The scripture says that um, seek after the kingdom of God. And every other thing will follow. The kingdom of God isn't in um, activities. The kingdom of God is talks about there, it speaks about there, it's a person. The kingdom of God is an, is an embodiment. And that embodiment is Jesus Christ. So seek after the Lord Jesus. And establishing that relationship, establishing that fellowship, make the fellowship and the relationship with him your priority. Once that is established, once that is laid down, every other thing by faith will be added. 
It's a, that's, that's, a, that's essentially the gospel. Amen? So I wrote here, I said, Jesus is the end of all search. Therefore, when the heart finds Jesus, that the heart will be satisfied. I, and, and it's true. Everyone that I've, I know so far, that I've come to the point where they've actually met with Jesus. Not just practicing religion. Not just having a sense of God, godliness. Everyone that have come to the understanding that this thing is all about Jesus Christ. All about Jesus Christ. The Father's desire is for us to be born again to, and then come to the Son. When we come to the Son, we, are now, we will now be made sons of God. But even being made sons of God, we are still to continue with knowing the Son. Continue in the fellowship with the Son. And in fellowship with the Son, we are renewed from the, from the inner man by the Holy Ghost. Renewed day by day. Fellowship with the Son is a present continuous activity. Renewed day by day. And we are strengthened more in the name of Jesus. So let's go to John 6, 35. John chapter 6, verse 35 in the NLT. If I can have John 6, 35 in the NLT. John 6, 35. No, John 6, verse 35. <clears throat> John 6 verse 35 okay thank you okay so Jesus is talking here it's, Jesus is telling tells them that I'm the bread of life whoever comes to me will never be hungry again whoever believes in me will never be thirsty so in other words man's pursuit for every other thing apart from coming to know Jesus Christ and willingly and having this fellowship with, with him, it's because they are thirsty. It's because there are things that they're looking for, things that they have desire. Maybe they're going through one pain or the other. And so they seek after this, things, not being um, able to be patient and to wait in that fellowship with him. They seek after all these things through um, signs and wonders. And many of times, most of the people, it's not even their fault. It's the fault of the pastors, the fault of that apostle, the fault of that teacher. Who, who, who they, they themselves are not matured in the word of righteousness as it concerns the knowledge of the truth, who is the person of Jesus Christ. Amen? So Jesus said, he says, the bread of life, whoever comes to him will never be hungry again. And whoever believes in him will never be tested. Like I said, all those that I've known so far, including myself, you know, there's this sense of um, what's the word I'm looking for? Contentment. You know, there's this sense, there's this sense of overwhelming contentment that is outpoured from from the Holy Ghost in coming to the realization of Jesus Christ, the knowledge and the person of Jesus Christ. Is that imprinted in our hearts? We have now been conformed. A lot of um, men, such as AVG, who have made themselves available to the Lord, so that the Lord can teach us through through um, through Him as a vessel to come to know Him, to 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 have patience with Him, to 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 be in fellowship with Him, and the most important one of them all, to have confidence in Him, because if you have confidence. In something or someone, trust me, it's going to translate into you um, waiting, into you loving, loving them, and understanding what their heart's desire is for you. Amen. Okay, so Paul says, while these six signs we preach Christ. So it is the duty of every man of God, who, who is a pastor, apostle, teacher, evangelist, to expose Christ. At every given opportunity. Expose Christ at every given opportunity. We have so many people now that have dropped exposing Christ for the miraculous. They've dropped exposing Christ for the signs and wonders. They've dropped exposing Christ for so many other things. And therefore leaving the people malnourished. Their spirit man malnourished. Not receiving nutrients from, from the Godhead not receiving nutrients from, from the Son of God, who is the head of the church. So they are now born again, but instead of having that fellowship for continual and everyday um, 
everyday supply of nutrients, you know, from the Lord through the Spirit of God. They are now, if, once you, if you, the Lord could open your eyes to see, you see so many people who think that they are bouncing about in the physical, meanwhile in the spiritual realm, they are malnourished. And this, I can imagine, is, is making the, the, the Lord, you know, somewhat unhappy, somewhat sad, you know. But one thing we all know is that the Lord can never be disadvantaged. The Lord can never be disadvantaged in the name of Jesus. 1 Corinthians 1.23 1 Corinthians 1.23 in King James Version. 1 Corinthians 1.23. He said, So when we preach, when we preach that Christ was when we preach that Christ was crucified, the Jews are offended. And the Gentiles say it's all 1 Corinthians 1.23. Okay, thank you. 23, 23. When, but, but we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews, a stumbling block. And unto the Greeks, foolishness. So, believers with um, <laughs> believers with a sense of uh, this Pharisee Pharisee spirit, you know, still operating from the point of the Pharisee. They are born again, you know, but they are still operate, operating from that point, not being renewed in their thought pattern, in their mind. You know, when we say we come unto such and we say. Look, this thing is all about Christ. It's all about Jesus Christ. We need to come towards him every day, 24-7, 365 days a year, as much as we can, so that we can live from the point of rest as spirit beings that we are. He said, on, on to such, he said, stumbling, stumbling block. So, so many people, it's not, it's not like they don't believe in Christ, but they don't see Christ as sufficient enough. They don't see him as enough. They don't see him as... Uh, why should we dwell with Christ alone? That's why some some men, some women, some people, some organizations, you hear them say, is it only Christ that is in the Bible? Is it only Jesus that is in the Bible? As a matter of fact, it's because you don't have understanding. If you have understanding, you would know that it's only be Jesus Christ from the point of Adam to, to in Genesis to Revelation. It's only been, been Jesus Christ. Yes, the topic of discussion, you know. <clears throat> when, uh, it, uh, in the case of Abel and Cain, you know, they told they were supposed to, to, to sacrifice. Cain brought in so, um, fruits, fruits which were not, you know, not, it's not the, the, the case of it being rotten, so it's not even the case. It is the type of sacrifice he brought. And Abel brought in um, a, a, a lamb. And the only reason why God accepted Abel's sacrifice it's because of that lamp. And in Revelation, what did he say? He said, the lamp of God that was slain. So, Abel's sacrifice was a type and shadow of Jesus Christ. That's why he was, his, his sacrifice was accepted. Nothing else. So, you see, that story was a type of shadow of Jesus Christ. Every story that is recorded in the Old Testament, every major story is a type and shadow. The Jews are so, so many other prophets, so many other writers. Which, book, which their books were not part of the 66 books of, of the King James Version. But go and check their books. None of their writings point to Jesus Christ. And since the Holy Ghost is the author of the, the Bible, the scriptures from the um, Old Testament to the epistles of the New Testament, he only made and influenced men to put together the books that talk about the coming Messiah, that talks about the Savior of mankind, that talks about the one who is coming to give the final rest, the seventh day rest. Amen? So, the Bible has always been about one person. The scriptures has always been about one person, and that is Jesus Christ. We can do nothing, or say nothing to take away anything from that. That's just the truth. Amen? Amen? Okay. Okay, so now we're going to be going into the difference between the real and the fake in terms of the, the ministry, in terms of the message, in terms of the, uh, the minister also. If the message is not about the gospel of Christ, it is not of God. Now, I know there are so many people that are going to be, um, you know, oh, I can't say that. So you, so, so you mean that if I do any other, any, any other thing in my church, or if I do another function outside or slightly away from preaching Christ Jesus, you mean that it's, it's not of God? Yes. 
Because this thing is all about, all about the Son of God. It's all about Jesus Christ. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 12, NLT. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 12. I want to show you why this thing is, this thing is all about Jesus Christ. It's all about the man, Jesus Christ. There's a reason why he's the mediator of the New Testament. Amen? Second Corinthians 11, verse 12. But I will continue doing what I have always done. This will undercut those who are looking for an opportunity to boast that their work is just like us. Okay, so this is, this is Paul saying, saying um, to paint or to make clear the scenario of what's going on between those who are um, helping you. Because this is, this, is, this is the true help. Those who are sincere in following Jesus Christ. Those who, are, who only care about revealing Christ Jesus to his body for them to be nourished in their spirit man, for them to grow in their faith, you know, with Christ Jesus. He said one, the way that he's going to undercut those is to continue to preach the gospel. So he's trying to take the, the carpet from underneath their feet. He's trying to strip them, the, the, uh, the fake ministers with fake gospels. Gospels that are not um, ordained of God. Gospels that do, do not show the, the, what the heart of God is for the body of Christ. Amen? He said, I will continue doing what I have always done. Now, this will undercut those, those who are looking for an opportunity to boast that their work is just like us. So there are so many pastors, so many teachers, so many um, bishops, whatever, you know, that have a sense of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. And the scriptures say that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God. So they somehow manipulate, somehow have large followings, large ga gatherings, and begin to do um, certain um, activities here and there. And in doing so, they not believe that, you know, oh, God is, is with us. It's possible for a crowd to be in a place, but God is not there. And why isn't God, um, God there? Because God's heart and God's desire is not being practiced. It's not being done in, in, that, in, that, in, that, in that gathering. Above all things, know now, above all things, it is the Father's desire that you know the Son and have fellowship with Him. In having fellowship with Him, with the Son, you have fellowship with the Father. Amen? Okay. So, verse, verse 13. Verse 13, 1 Corinthians 11, 13. So, these people are false apostles. They are deceitful workers who disguise themselves as apostles of Christ. Oh, wow. Paul said that, Paul said, I think in Romans, he said, I, Paul, am apostle of Jesus Christ. As an apostle of Jesus Christ, you have been sent by Jesus himself for one assignment, to preach Christ crucified. Now, there's so many pastors, so many apostles, if you ask them now, they say, oh, they are men of God or they are men or the servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are the man of God or a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will show it. You will prove it. Now, how do you prove it? So, th these people are false apostles. They are deceitful workers who disguise themselves as apostles of Christ. You will prove it by being the apostles of Christ, by disseminating Christ, by teaching Christ. Amen. But they do almost every other thing but making men know Christ. And now we're, I'm even talking of now for people that are now born again, for the church, under their care. They're not exposing them to Jesus Christ. They're not exposing them to building their, their, their spirit man up, to helping their faith, to feeding their faith in Christ. They're not helping them to have that fellowship with Christ. They, the people now are always pursuing, pursuing after uh, means, after mantle, after anointing oil after um, signs and wonders, after things just to validate themselves and make them feel good. Amen? But the fellowship of, that they are supposed to have, which is the Father's desire, they've, 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 they've bent that. They've left that. You know? And for God, and even Paul, th these things suggest that these men are false. And if they are born again, then their ministry and their teaching 
or whatever they say they've been called into is false. Because every minister and every teacher, every pastor, every bishop is supposed to expose the church, the body of Christ, to the head, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? <clears throat> okay. So, I wrote here, I said, apostles or, or, or ministers? Apostles or ministers? Now, we have apostles of marriage. We have apostles of money. When I mean apostles, are also men of God, ministers. So, ministers or apostles or pastors of marriage, money, deliverance, fruit of the womb. So, there are so many, there are so many um, distractions out there. And these men have known that the people want these things. This is what they desire. This is what they want. So they by, by the sidetrack the knowledge of Jesus, they sidetrack exposing the people to Jesus, and they make themselves ministers of, of these things. Okay, let's go to Ephesians 2, verse 19 to... Yes, Ephesians 2, verse 19 to 20. Let's go. Ephesians 2, 19. So now... Ephesians 2, no, no, um, King James, please. Ephesians 2, 19. Ephesians 2, 19. Okay. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the house of God. Okay. Verse 20. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the, the chief cornerstone. So you see, we are called as ministers to build. But you must be careful how, how you build and what your foundation is. I'm talking to ministers now who are called to teach the body of Christ. He said, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles. So the foundation of the apostle is what? That foundation is Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ himself who is also the chief cornerstone. So he is the foundation and is also the chief cornerstone. You were called to the ministry. You are now born again. You've now uh, fulfilled half of the Father's desire, which is for you to be saved. But after being saved now, even you as a minister, you as a pastor, you as an apostle, you're not bringing them to the knowledge of the truth. You're not bringing them to help them to understand the, 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 the reason for them being saved, which is in, to have fellowship, to be intimate with the Son. And being intimate with the Son, you are in, become intimate and have that relationship with the Father himself. Amen? So, the foundation must, be, must, must first be in place. A man that builds a house and does not make sure that the foundation is solid enough that house might stand looking shiny for a while, but after it's a while, the house will crumble. The house always crumbles. Especially when there's like a storm or an earthquake or, or, or whatever. The house always crumbles. You need to build these people up in this foundation. We need to stabilize them, root them, ground them in the foundation, which is the Lord Jesus himself. Paul said we preach Christ. So you see that Paul was always, always establishing, always rooting the people's foundation. In this knowledge, in knowing Jesus Christ more for themselves and also it benefit them in the, in the long term. And in doing so, it gives the people a sense of contentment. Not to pursue after signs and wonders, pursue after handkerchiefs, pursue after anointing oil, pursue, pursue after uh, so many other distractions out there that the devil is taking advantage of to give them a sense of validation. No, validation is coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Come to know the Lord Jesus Christ for yourself. And, and as a minister, you know that you'll be held accountable. Come to, as a matter of fact, the, for most ministers, the reason why they are not able to expose the part of the body of Christ under their care is because they have, is it that they have refused to come to know Jesus, the Lord Jesus for themselves or their ignorance. So whether it's ignorance or your refusal, I'm speaking to you now. The Lord Jesus is speaking to you now through me. Repent, repent, and come to know him. Come to know him so you can teach those under him. 
for which for who you be you you be you uh, you will give account for. So that they can have fellowship with him, they can have uh, communion with him, you know, so that they, that relationship can be established, so that they can be uh, they can have um, confidence and boldness, and this is what the Lord is seriously um, interested in. Your confidence and boldness of those believers under you. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. But how can they be as bold as a lion if they don't know um, who their husband is? If they don't have that relationship, relationship with the head of the body, the body of Christ will move groping in, in darkness, God forbid, except they be turned to the Lord. And that's what the scripture says. It says, when you shall turn to the Lord, that body of Christ under you needs to be turned to the Lord now, you need to t- change your, your teaching, change your approach, change your mindset. Repent and turn towards the Lord now, so that all those that are under you will begin to um, f- feast on better teachings that helps renew their mind after the Lord, that helps mature them, amen, so that in their spirit man, they become nourished and not mal- malnourished, amen. Okay. So now we'll go to 1 Corinthians 3. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 9. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 9. Okay, so we're reading from verse um, 9 to 15. For we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. Verse 10. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another build it thereon. So you see, foundation issue is very important because we now know who the foundation is. Paul is, Paul is saying that I've laid that foundation, and for everyone that's going to be building from this foundation, you must continue with the same building materials. Continue with the same building materials because. The devil moving to our fools, seeking for whom he may devour. That storm is still going to come. That earthquake is still going to happen. That problem issue is still going to come. Christianity is not promised us without, um, without issues, without challenges. Amen? But even in the midst of that storm, the midst of that earthquake, the midst of whatever the devil will bring over just to devour um, his victims, if the foundation and the building material Another build it there on. It's solid. It's Christ revealed to the, to, um, to the people. It's Christ imprinted in their hearts and in their minds. Whatever it is, you will find out that what you have built, which is the people, will stand through the test of time. We stand through that storm. We stand through that earthquake. We stand through that challenge. Amen? The Bible says, after you have suffered a while, you see that, the, that <coughs> God will fulfill his promises to you. But the way for you to stand in that time of um, challenges is by having a man, a woman, who will teach, who will ground you in Christ, who will help you establish, who will help set your foundation right. And then even after being set uh, foundationally right, the building thereof to help your faith in Christ to keep going is Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. But let every man take heed how he build it thereupon. So as a minister, like I said before, we have men, men and women who have, are called uh, uh, ministers of, uh, I mean, oh, I'm a minister for marriage, I'm a minister for, um, for prosperity, I'm a minister for deliverance, for, for this and that. You should know that how your building is, is wrong. How you are building is wrong. Certain, certain, certain topics are, are still okay, you know, to teach the people. But even if you are going to teach them, it should be in the face of Christ. It should be from the standpoint of Christ Jesus. It should be that this is who Christ Jesus has made them to be. Amen? Not that you be teaching them away from Christ. So the, 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 the idea is to teach men things that will edify them, th- things that, that will grow them up, you know, but also along with those teachings, match it up with Christ's 
um, with Christ being the one who has made this possible for them, with Christ being their, 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 their finished work. Amen? So we go to, so very important, mind how you build. Please, please, very important, because you're going to give account for that. You know, this, these things, we say it um, casually, <laughs> but on that day, it won't be a joke. No one will be um, laughing. No one's going to be cracking jokes, you know. It's just you and the Lord giving account for how you, uh, how you built. So, please, I'm begging you now, work on how you are building. If you haven't been told this by anybody, or you've been told this by somebody, and you still refuse to change, please, I'm telling you, I'm begging you now, the Lord Jesus Christ, please change, because you're going to give account of how you build, amen? So, verse 11 now. For other foundations can no man lay than that which is laid, than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Verse 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Hold on. So you see, for ministers who are not committed, who do not believe, who say it's only Christ Jesus in the Bible, preaching every, every other thing apart from Christ, not establishing them in the gospel of Christ, not establishing them in the power of, of God, which is the gospel of Christ. The Bible says that they are building with stones, wood, hay, stubble. You're not building with precious metals. You're, you're building with, with, with hay, with stubble, with, with, with wood, with precious, with precious stones. With, you know, you see, you see why I separated the precious stones and the gold and silver from the wood and hay and stubble. Let's go to verse 13. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. So you say that you're a minister of uh, prosperity, minister of, uh, of, of healing, minister of science and wonders, ministers for, uh, minister of uh, science, uh, 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 for, for money, money doubling, or whatever that is, you know, you are treading on a dangerous ground. I, I plead with you to retrace your step, to come back to what you are supposed to be doing, what you were called into in the first place, which is to reveal the Son of God to the people. In Proverbs, he said, kiss the Son. Kiss the Son. Let's him be angry. Kiss the Son. But in this case, it's the ministers now. Retrace your step. Come back to preaching Christ and revealing Christ to the people. Because you're going to give account. You won't go scot-free. You won't go scot-free. You will give account. So, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. So you see that it's not all teachings. It's not all, all preachings. It's not all gatherings that the work going there is satisfaction to the Lord. You see, so it's just allowing a moment, um, period of, of, of mercy, of, of, of grace. And you'll be sending men and women part-time to that person, to that minister, to that group of people to come back into what they are supposed to um, be doing, which is the fellowship of the Son. Especially to the minister. Because his work shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work, his, that minister's work, of what sort it is. So we that are preaching Christ to the people, teaching people about, about, about the Lord Jesus Christ, helping them to come into that fellowship, that relationship, they, 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 they laugh as such. You know? They say things as, is it, is it, is it only Christ in the Bible? Is it, they say things as, oh, that man, that woman, that guy, that lady, that church, all they know is Jesus Christ. <laughs> Meanwhile, it is they that don't know what they should know. It is they that need our help. It is they that should come to us to learn and to get understanding of what these things is all about. What they think it, that Christianity is all about is not really what it's all about. What Christianity is all about is Christ being preached, Christ being exposed to the church. You being conformed to the image of the Son of God. That's what Christianity is about. So when you have, when I, when I hear men who say such things, is Christ the only one in the Bible? Or is, 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 that, is that what you're going to be preaching? 
you know, I, 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 I'm sorry, but I have to laugh. Because in thinking that, oh, this person doesn't know anything, that's what he knows. I'm laughing because it's you who don't know. And the reason why you don't know is because either you are ignorant or you're just blatantly refusing to open up your heart to what the Holy Ghost is saying right now, which is for all men to come to the knowledge of the truth. And that is Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Verse 14. If any man's work abide, which he had built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. So, it's possible for you to be laboring all these years. Sweating in that convention. Sweating in that meeting. Hallowing. Doing all, all sorts of um, signs and wonders. Moving the heavens and, every, and, 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 and everything that it all pertains to that. And, and you have the men and people shouting in the church. You know, say, oh, that man of God is heavy loaded. But when he meets the Lord, if his work is not solid, if his work is not satisfactory, if his work he has been building is not the foundation, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember, it's not just about the foundation itself. It's how you build on that foundation. I said something. I said the foundation and the building material on that foundation should be the same ma uh, material. So we start off with Jesus. We continue in Jesus. And it's going to end in Jesus. Jesus being revealed to the church. Amen. It says, if any man's work abide, which he had built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Like ABJ said, we have not received any reward yet. <laughs> but I want to just zero in for, for ministers now. Even though this talks and covers the, the entire body of Christ. But for ministers now, because why I want to zero in on it now? Because your work is very important and very, um, I would have delicate. You know, if you get it right, the Lord, the, all those people will get it right also under, under your care. Amen? So, I don't want you leaving and forgetting that you're still going to meet with the Lord and still going to give Him account and still going to present your work to Him. You know deep down what I'm saying is the truth. You know that presenting your work as you have seen in the scriptures now for yourself, not just by the words of my mouth, but what your eyes have seen, you know that that fire is going to burn your work up. You know that there's, go there's not going to be anything left. Because what you are presenting as your work is not the Lord himself. The Lord is, is that gold. The Lord is that silver. The Lord is, is the one that when you present your work in that and take it through the fire, when we all meet with him, only the Lord will remain. So if your work is projecting the Lord that you have been building the entirety of your life, when it is tested through the fire, it will remain. But if you know that you, you, your, your work or your teaching, your ministry, does not expose people to the gospel of Christ, does not build people up in the knowledge of, of, of him, does not help them with, the, with that fellowship that First Timothy talk, talks about, you have no reward. Well, why would the Lord reward you for, for a work that has just gone up in flames? So in, in essence, you've done nothing. You've only been living for yourself. That's all that it says. You've only been living for yourself. Jesus told Peter, he said, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. And feeding the sheep is the Lord Jesus himself. Jesus told them, he said, your fathers ate manners. But that manna that it was not from heaven. It was a manna that came from another camp here on earth. He said, your fathers ate that manna and they died. He said, but either we eat this manna that comes from heaven, so you shall live forever. So why should you be born again, called into the ministry as a pastor, as a bishop, as an apostle, you know, and then you shake on her. You deviate because of the lust that, uh, because of the lust that you are, that you have, um, that, that you have somehow dabbled into. Yes, the love, the loss of money, greed, fame, you know. So you put her aside the desire of, 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 of the Lord, which is for men to come to know him, men to come to have relationship with him, men to come to have fellowship with him. You, you tell him, uh, uh, okay, I'm born again, now I'm a minister, but because of my own loss for money, for greed, for fame, for so many exceptions and exceptions, Lord Jesus, please, let's bench what you want aside. There's no problem. There's a reason why he's the Prince of Peace. 
So he doesn't come into argument. Even though he might send one or two ministers to come and tell you. But he doesn't come into argument with you. He starts struggling with you. No. He wants to continue that path even after he has, by his grace and mercy, sent men your way to help you come back on track. It's no problem. You will still meet him and give account him. Your work will still go through that fire. And you'll be ended in, in, you end up looking naked, ashamed. You know? Because by then, everything else will be made manifest to you. You will know things. There's this sense of shame that will just overwhelm the person. That all these years, the devil has somehow managed to um, take him of his own lust. To drop the Lord's agenda, to drop God's agenda, which is to reveal um, um, Christ to, 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 to the body of Christ, to men and to women. You drop his agenda to pursue your own. And in thereby pursuing your own, you are teaching false things and, and propagating um, um, the devil's um, the devil's agenda. the devil's agenda, which is to take attention away from Jesus Christ. It's too sad, too sad. Please repent and come back to your original calling. Come back and be a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come back and expose men. First of all, exposing your own self. That's why we have the um, um, meeting, such as the uh, September conference coming up. It's September twenty seventh to September um, twenty ninth. Um, every day, starting from 10, 10 o'clock, you know. If as a minister, you need help in knowing what you should be teaching, knowing what, um, where to start from, come, come. The advert is going to be put on maybe at the end of, of this teaching so that you can have the address and the details of how you can attend that meeting. Amen? Come, it's for your own good. You can even bring your, 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 your fellow, your ministers, your, your, your workers, so that everybody can be on the same page, you know. You know now what I'm what I'm talking about now. What I'm saying now is 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 you are you agree with it because you have the spirit of God in you. You just needed your heart, your mind to be renewed. You didn't know these things before. You were ignorant, or if you knew them but you were still other man in pushing your ways, you want to repent. Come, September 27 to 29 with Apostle Victor James at Experience Grace Auditorium, 62 Olo Buffet Street, Akonjo, um, Lagos. Every day, Monday to Wednesday, by 10 a.m. Come so that you can learn. Amen? Amen. Okay. So, okay, First Corinthians 1, God is faithful by whom you were called under the fellowship. So, every man's calling, every believer's calling is fellowship with Jesus Christ. Whatever you are teaching, whatever way you want to do your sermon or encourage the people, it must be Excuse me, it was me from the point of fellowship with the Son Jesus, with the Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord. If it's not in the point of helping people to fellowship, to be a, a, a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, as a minister, you have not even begun your calling. What you're doing is just religious practices and fulfilling the loss of your own flesh, the loss of your own desire. And it's not it's not even you. The devil is the one taking advantage. Stop pushing out that signs and wonders. Stop pushing out that mantles. Stop pushing uh, um, after greed, after fame, after, after money. You know? Expose the people to the Lord Jesus Christ. Say we have been called to preach Christ. Paul says we preach Christ and Him crucified. Amen? I believe that you have been blessed today. I believe there was so much more that we are supposed to go through. But because of time, you know, we will continue another time. Let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for that man and that woman, that lady and that, and, and that um, guy, the, the organization, that church, in the name of Jesus, and everyone under the sound of my voice, who want to truly repent and come into the knowledge of Christ Jesus, and even to expose them to um, their, their, their mates, their, 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 uh, their brothers, their sisters, their friends, their church, that you empower them from within, strengthen their hearts, don't let shame hold them back. Don't let greed hold them back. Don't let um, um, everything that's a distraction hold them back from revealing um, um, Christ Jesus to their generation. In the name of Jesus, whatever is you, your need, or whatever it is that you, uh, you are been asking God for, in the name of Jesus, by the reason and the power of the knowledge of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, as we have discussed today and, and, this, and um, come into fellowship with I decree and I say that you will have them in the name of Jesus. I decree and I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord keep you, 
the Lord shines his countenance upon you in the name of Jesus and that you remain in him now, both now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, quickly, we can't go without asking you to give. Um, AVJ um, asks for third, um, 100 people, 300 people rather, I can give 10,000 naira. Now, we have some, some people that have given. So, to, to those that have given, I want to say a special thank you for honoring the call, you know, for making yourself available, uh, spe specifically financially wise, for making yourself available financially to this calling. We're supposed to reach so many out there, and we can't reach them without um, financial backing. So, you that are making yourself financial um, uh, um, available, I want to say thank you. And to those that are still wanting to give and are still looking to, to, to give to meet that um, um, 300 with 10,000, 10, I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ will give you the resources available now for, for, for backing up this gospel. And remember, because it's for the gospel, believe and have faith and know that that resources will come into your possession even more abundantly as the Lord desires for you. In Jesus' name, amen. So now we have... The account, Zenit, Zenit account, for those in Nigeria, you can use Zenit Bank, 1001488167. I'm going to repeat that again. For those in Nigeria who want to give, Zenit Bank, 1001488167. And then we have the foreign account for everyone outside Nigeria, I mean Singapore, America, England, and Ireland, Scotland, um, um, Australia, Finland, Sweden. Uh, the Barbados, the Balkans, um, every, everywhere out there that I've been watching on, on, online. Please, you can use foreign account guaranteed trust bank. The number is 001-686-4145. I'll call that again. 001-686-4145. The swift code for, for, for that is G-T-B-I-N-G-L-A. G T B I N G L A. Amen. And the WhatsApp to reach every day. If you have questions or you have a request for the books or um, for especially the conference coming up that we talked about, you know, please, the number is there on the screen so that you can send your message and um, we'll get back to you in the name of Jesus Christ. All right. Thank you for being here with me today. And I trust the Lord Jesus Christ that our, our time together. Oh, was glorious. Amen. So, looking forward to see AVJ here for the next meeting, which is Thursday by 10 p.m. So, until next time, I love you. God bless. This is Pastor Victor James signing out. Amen. Bye-bye.